In today's video, we're going to open these two boxes, which contain 50 pounds of mystery jeans. So, I sell clothing, used and new clothing, on the Poshmark app to make a little bit of extra money. And one place I get inventory is from ThreadUp's Rescue Boxes. So, ThreadUp is an online consignment store where people can send items from their own closet. And people can mark whether they want their items back or not. And if people don't want their items back, ThreadUp will put them into these mystery boxes if they aren't able to sell them. Also, if items have damage, ThreadUp will put them in these mystery boxes. That's why they're called DIY denim because some of them need work. So I will be looking for stains and other flaws. So in terms of cost, these two boxes I paid $60 for, $66, $60 plus $6 shipping. And I probably will get somewhere between 40 and 60 pairs of denim items. So that'll be like just over a dollar an item. And these don't all have to be jeans, but they're usually mostly jeans. So let's get started. Let's see what I got this time. Fingers crossed we find some really good stuff. It's a bit of a gamble. It might be a bunch of garbage brands or really damaged stuff, but you might find some really good stuff too. That one item could make all the boxes worth it. going to set this box down while I pull things out. We have a pair of floral jeans. I don't think I've ever gotten a pair of floral jeans. Not that printed jeans do that well, but okay. Oh my gosh. Literally the very first item on top. You guys saw me open this, right? Like I promise I did not, what's the word? Like stack, stack. There's a word for this, but I didn't do this. But look, very first item, mother jeans. Damn! <laughs> like, seriously, hopefully that's like a sign of good things to come. Maybe I should look over these a little bit before I get too excited. Let's see if we got a hole in the crotch. No. Do we have stains? No. Okay, it looks like the bottom hem is a little bit torn up on both of them. So that is probably why they got in this box. But I am very happy with these. Wow, we are starting off on a high note. It has been three weeks since I recorded this video, so some of the items have sold, and I'm gonna put those in here whenever I show an item that has sold. So these mother jeans I had listed at $50, and after two weeks I had four people who had liked the jeans, and I sent out an offer for $42 with discounted shipping, and they sold. So this means I took home $31, and that means I, the rest of the box cost me $35. If you take the 66 I paid, minus the 31 I made on this sale. One other note I want to make on these jeans is that I think the distressing might have actually been intentional. Here's a picture of a brand new pair of jeans listed on Nordstrom Rack, and you can see that the hem looks similar. All right, next up, we have a pair of shorts from Topshop. I haven't picked up Topshop for a very long time. Oh, and it has stains on it. Um, and skirts just don't really sell that well for me. I don't think jean skirts are that on trend. I decided to ask my Instagram followers their opinions. First, I asked if they think jean miniskirts are in style. 62% agreed with me as that they were not, and 38% said that they are. Then I asked what about midi and maxi skirts. This one, we had 70% said no, and 30% said yes. And then finally, I asked for this specific skirt, this Topshop skirt, if it were not stained, would you pick it up for $1 to resell? And two thirds said yes, they would. And later in this video, I have more jean skirts, and for every jean skirt I got, I asked my Instagram followers, and I will show you their answers to the polls. Next, we have blue spice jeans, size 7. They're colored. Um, these aren't going to be worth much. Next, we have a pair of white shorts, which probably means they have a stain, from the brand Click B. I have never heard of this brand. Next, we have a pair of gray jeans. They are from H&M. They're a size six. They are gray. I, I generally avoid colored jeans. I haven't had very much luck in the past with colored jeans. Um, and it looks like these also have a stain on them, which is probably how they got in this box. 
So I will not be listing those. I know in all these videos when I say which ones I won't list, I get criticism about why not just list them. You might be able to get a little bit of money, but it's just time is money, right? If I spend it on these, then I'm not spending on something else. And I could just order more boxes, only pull out the good stuff, only spend my time on that and make a really good return on my time invested. All right, next we have a pair of celebrity pink jeans, size 13. These are definitely feel like very low quality. Oh my gosh, are these intentional? It has cuts like all down the back. I feel like a cut right here wouldn't be intentional, right? Like right below your butt cheek. <laughs> um, also, there's a bunch of cuts in the back of this leg. So yeah, I definitely won't be listing those. All right, next is the brand Garage. This is a pretty inexpensive mall brand, size double zero. Um, you don't see any stains on these. I won't list them though, just because they're gonna have a very low resale value. These feel very inexpensive. Once you've opened enough jeans, you can kind of tell right away if they're gonna be expensive or not. The brand is actually missing. They are ripped in the knees. And the size, oh, the size tag is actually attached. No, it is not. All right, so no brand, no size, holes in the knees. I won't list these either. Dang, it's good we started off with those mother jeans because now I've had like six in a row that I'm not gonna list, which is a pretty bad rate compared to most of the boxes. All right, next is a pair of jeans from the brand BDG. So, I had a pair of jeans from BDG in one of my boxes. Let me look up what I sold those for. So it looks like I sold the BDG jeans I had in the past for $19. So not terrible, given that I paid probably a dollar for them because they also came in a thread up mystery box. They were a pretty cute style. And I don't know if these are as on trend as the other ones were. These are very dark jean. They are a size... Okay, they're the high-rise twig. So they're high-rise, so maybe they will have somewhat of a following. I'm not seeing the size right off the bat, but I will probably list these. Let's see if we have any big flaws. Any flaws on them. And again, there is the label. There is a bit of dirt, so maybe they just got thrown in here because they need to be washed and ThreadUp doesn't wash the jeans. So, I mean, I'll be happy to wash them in order to sell them. Next, we have a pair of jeans from the brand <laughs> Look at this tag. It says wax jean, but I love you. <laughs> I've never heard of this brand. Um, so here are the jeans. I really have no idea what these sell for. And I will just put the comparable sold listings on the screen. And these are a size nine. So these, okay, put it up here. These are an interesting pair of jeans. They're like really thick. They are J. Crew. And they are the Karaya denim. They're, just, they're very stiff and thick. Okay, it says raw indigo dyed selvage denim. And they are a size 32. I don't know much about this. I feel like it's possible that this is like, I mean, it's, like I said, it's so unique. It's possible that it's really desirable because there are specific people who really like this style of jean. This style of jeans by J. Crew is definitely a style to be on the lookout for. The sold for pre-owned raw selvage J. Crew jeans were about $30 to $50. So I started mine at $40. And about 10 days after listing them, I had two likers, so I sent out an offer for $32 with discounted shipping, and someone accepted. Looking back, I think if I would have listed them around $50 and just waited, I could have sold them around $50 because they look like they have never been worn. So I think I actually could have gotten more for these jeans if I would have just started them higher and waited a little longer. But I'm still happy with the sale. I made $23. And if you add in what I made from the mother jeans, that means the rest of this box, other than the mother jeans and these jeans, cost me $12. So we almost have our cost recouped. Next pair of jeans from Express. And they are pretty distressed. All right, we see, I see a stain on the jeans right here. 
and they are size 4 regular and they are the mid-rise legging style um these are the oh no <laughs> so i was gonna say that the high rise do better these are super low rise jeggings so we'll see what the comps are um so here is i mean you guys all probably know what american eagle looks like the super low rise jegging okay let's look at the floral ones so these are from the brand vanilla star which i think is a pretty inexpensive brand Okay, we have another pair of BDG. They're a size 29 pair of shorts. Like I said, my only experience is with the one pair of jeans I sold for $19. So here is what they look like. Here is the back and there are the three red stripes. Put down below what, if you guys have experience with BDG because I see another pair coming. So I'll be having three potentially that I'll be listing um, if the comparable sold listings look good. Next, we have a pair of Old Navy jeans. They're black, and they are a size 8 short. Let's see if there are flaws. Okay, so we have a little paint streak here. So, But given there's a paint streak and they're Old Navy, probably will not list those. Okay, let's do the other pair of BDG jeans since I already saw them. Okay. These look like something somebody would buy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, all these things are probably things someone would buy. But something someone would buy for like fifteen or twenty dollars. So there is the brand. There's the back. These are cute. I'm not seeing anything major right off the bat. Again, we have the three red stripes from BDG. Next, we have a pair of Hollister jeans. They are a size. 25 and they are the high-rise super skinny we have maybe like a pencil mark right there all right we have another pair of Hollister jeans same size size 25 one r so this is probably donated by the same person and they are also the high-rise super skinny so these have um you'll see this in a lot of jeans where they get these like stretch marks near the zipper there's some brands like page i feel like i think it's page yeah like Almost every time I find Paige in the thrift stores, it's like, like it's all been stressed, stretched out by the zipper. And this jean has the puckering right here from being stretched out. Next, we have a pair of DKNY jeans. So, there are the jeans. I also, I do not see size on these. The tag is like faded so much, I can't read the size. Okay, next we have a pair of Joe's jeans. They are a size 27 and they are the Wasteland ankle, ankle high rise skinny ankle. And here is the Joe's jeans. I have sold some Joe's jeans. Let me look real quick um, to see what I got for them. So in the past, I have sold a handful of women's Joe's jeans and I got 20, 22, 17, 22, 18, 35 and 20 so right around that $20 mark is what I've gotten in the past for women's Joe's jeans Although it's probably been probably a year since I have found any so we'll see I'm guessing I can probably get at least $20 for these they're a uh, high-rise and I think they're kind of cute <laughs> Next up we have another pair of Joe's jeans again probably from the same person who donated them so Joe's jeans they are a size 28 and they are the fin ankle style and they are a good size so this pair are from the brand ymi these are not a pair with a very high resale value they are a pair of jean shorts size 5 or 27 um, but they're not uh, expensive enough brands to make the resale worth it next we have a pair of gap shorts they are the sexy boyfriend shorts size 28 next we have no brand no brand whatsoever <laughs> it's really odd there's like no tags no sign of a tag that used to be here just a pair of little shorts next we have a pair of green short or jeans 
from the brand Charter Club. They are a size 6. I expect the comparable sold listings are not going to be very good for these. Is that distressing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think that was intentional distressing. Someone literally just took a scissors and cut the knees, which would be why they are in this box. We have another pair of American Eagle jeans. They are the jegging style and a size 4. And they also have extremely distressed knees. I'm assuming ThreadUp has some rule if the holes in the knees are too big, they just go straight in a DIY denim box because they seem to have a lot of those in this box and I'm guessing that's how. When I was looking over the jeans after I recorded this video, I saw the hole in the crotch of these jeans, so I did not end up listing them. It, oh, okay. We have a pair of free people jeans. They are size 26 regular. We'll see on these, they do again have the big holes in the knees. That seems to be, like I said, a common theme with what's in my box. Here are some comparable sold listings. This style is actually called the busted knee jeans. And as you can see, the sold listings are very good for this style. We have a pair of jeans from the brand Tinseltown, and they have like a lace edge. These uh, feel like pretty inexpensive jeans. Even the tags look like inexpensive jeans. They are a size 11. Next are a pair of Old Navy jeans. They are a size 8. And it is a jean skirt. Since this is a jean skirt, I did poll my Instagram followers and 80% said they would not pick up this skirt for $1 to resell it. And I agree, I did not list this skirt. Let me know below if you guys have had any luck with jean skirts and if so, which brands? Because I can't even think of any brands off the top of my head that I know somebody who has sold jean skirts from them. Oh, speaking of jean skirts, we have another jean skirt. It's brand Style J in a size 30. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this. Ew. There's like a really gross stain on that pocket. On this skirt, an even higher percentage said they would not pick it up for $1. 92% said they would not pick up this brand and style of skirt for $1. Especially given the stains, I d chose not to list this skirt either. And final item. Wait, did I already show these? Yeah, I showed that. Did I show this one? No, I don't think I did, but it is another pair of no tag, no nothing shorts. And then the last item is a pair of shorts from Exhilaration, a size 13. Exhilaration is either sold at Target or Walmart. Can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, so let's check out the second box now. Fingers crossed we start with another pair of mother jeans. <laughs> I think that was probably my most damaged box I've ever gotten because there were very few in there that actually didn't have damage. Well, I don't see something crazy good right on the top of the box. So first thing I see is a pair of bullhead denim jeans, which I have gotten in many thread up boxes and never list because the comparable sold listings are not good. So I'm going to guess I will not be listing these. They are size 28 and they're in the style super high rise skinniest. Let's see if there is damage on these jeans. It looks like there's a little darker spot on this pocket. And we have the stretching around the zipper. And again, here's the brand. I see this often and I don't pick it up to sell on Poshmark. Next is the brand Time and True. This is sold at Walmart and it also has a hole in the waistband. Not off to a good start. <laughs> Two that I'm certain I will not list. They are distressed and the size, all the size tags have been cut out. So next is a pair of shorts from the brand Forever 21. I won't be listing these. The issue with Forever 21 isn't that there isn't um, a market who buys this brand. It's just that it retails for so low that it's not going to resell very much, especially when someone has to pay $7 of shipping on top of the purchase price. They actually look like they haven't been worn. I'm guessing they're just put in here because of the brand. I know ThreadUp um, recently had a list of brands that 
they will accept but they will no longer give any payouts for and i'm guess i think forever 21 is probably on that list next oh well this is a good brand but i didn't even know this brand made teeny tiny pants <laughs> so it's a brand seven for all mankind and is the style the skinny <clears throat> so not all seven for all mankind jeans are good but i have sold a couple styles i know dojos are kind of like the one that's really well known and their resale value has kind of been declining but i still had luck for with it when i sold it over the past year um and i also sold a pair of men's jeans for maybe 35 or 40. so yeah um <laughs> this is a teensy tiny pair of seven for all mankind jeans i did not even know they made kids jeans so oh my gosh these are small it is a size 18 months and there are some stains on the pocket, but I'm guessing those would come out in the wash. All right, we have a pair of Banana Republic jean, jean shorts in a size zero. Next, we have a pair of jeans from the brand Angels Forever Young. And it has an elastic waistband. I'm not familiar with this brand. It has, again, the stretching issues around the zipper. Can you guys see that? Yep, now you can see it very well. And I'm sure that's why it's in the box. Ding. These two, I said dang really weird there. Ding. Ding. <laughs> these two boxes have a lot of damage in them. So I feel like these are truly DIY boxes compared to some of the boxes I've gotten in the past. All right. Okay. Speak of page, I mentioned them earlier and how they often have stretching. Let's see if it does and it does exactly what i was talking about earlier page is a brand i often see in the stores and it has or when i should say when i see it in the stores which is not often but when i do it usually has the puckering around the zipper from the stretching i don't know exactly why but for whatever reason this happens to page jeans a lot in my experience oh and here's the tag page jeans you have to I don't definitely look up the style and see what they've sold for. Not all page sells well. These are the Hoxton Ultra Skinny. Again, we know why that was in the box because of the stretching around the zipper. We probably have about 20 pairs of jeans left, maybe a little more than 20. So we still have a chance to find some gold. <laughs> Fingers crossed, hopefully we find something good. I'm not seeing anything just from like what I can see but maybe something will come up. So next we have a pair of jeans from Old Navy. They are the curvy mid-rise and they are a size eight. Next. All right, it's Gap and it is the skinny Bermuda style in a size 30 regular. Oh, there are some stains. Again, I think those would probably come out in the wash but that is why these are in the DIY denim box. Next, we have a pair of Gloria Vanderbilt jeans. So Gloria Van Vanderbilt is like the easiest jean brand to find around me. You can go to any thrift store and you can find Gloria Vanderbilt. Um, they are a size six. On top of them being a low retail value pair of jeans, they've also been taken in in multiple spots. So I will not be listing these. All right, we have a pair of shorts from the brand LEI. These do not have a high resale value. All right, so we have a pair of shorts from Gap Denim. So they are a pair of Gap shorts. Oh, they're stained. They're definitely stained. Right here, we got some staining. Right here, right here. Yeah, lots of stains on those. I'm getting a little bit disappointed. <laughs> we haven't found really anything in this box. Yeah, nothing in this box that I'm excited about or confident that I will for sure be listing. What were these again? Oh yeah, Banana Republic, nah, not exciting. These tiny Seven for All Mankind jeans, probably not worth listing. So I don't think I have anything, I'm over halfway through. All right, next is a pair of 4T jeans from Polo Ralph Lauren. Just these little tiny guys. Okay, we have a pair of American Eagle shorts. They are a, the high rise shorty style in a size zero. Do 
we see any flaws. I do not see any flaws with them. They actually, like, they're kind of stiff almost, like they haven't been worn that much. So that is good. Maybe I'll end up listing those. I will say I, like, saved up, I think they're American Eagle shorts. Uh, I'm not sure what, I think they're American Eagle shorts. And I was like, I'll just list them like $15, $20 and hopefully I'll sell them and th they just sat and sat. So I don't know. Next we have a pair of shorts from the brand Massimo. They are this, a high rise style. This is a brand sold, why can't I never remember what sold at Target and what sold at Walmart? I think these this used to be sold at Target. They're a pair of shorts with a lace edge on them. Again, low, resell, re, low retail value and therefore they don't have a very high resale value. Okay, so next up we have a pair of Buttonfly Levi's. They are a size 26 and they definitely wear jeans and have been cut off. Next we have a pair of jeans from Seven for All Mankind. I am not that excited because they're white and I just have a lot of trouble selling white jeans because in these boxes they usually have flaws. So they are the ankle skinny style. Let's see if or where they have flaws. All right, so we have, again, we have the polling around the zipper on these jeans. That's too bad. But again, I, I haven't had too much luck selling white jeans because once I get around the lights, I always find little stains on them. We have a little stain here. Oh, come on, we need something. <laughs> Next is a skirt from Forever 21. It's a size 24. Another jean skirt means another Instagram poll. So 80% of my Instagram followers who answer the poll said they would not pick up this Forever 21 skirt for $1 to resell. And I'm in the same boat. It doesn't retail for a high amount. It's a very small size. And I did not decide to list this. Next are a pair of American Eagle jeans. These look like a very old style. They are size 14 and definitely this is an old tag. They are the skinny style and again, they are a size of 14. I did have, I think it was a pair of sites, 14 American Eagle jeans that I listed and I had a lot of people liking them. I think probably because American Eagle and size 14 are both things people are looking for. So even though these are older, and I don't think they're that in style. I might still list them just because of the demand for the brand. Did you think I forgot to tell you guys if I sold things? <laughs> so I haven't sold anything that I showed you in the last 15 minutes of the video, but I did sell these. I listed them at $15. Someone offered me $10 and I accepted. So they paid $17.45. When you take off the shipping and the fees, I made $7. So if you add up what I've netted off the mother jeans, the J. Crew jeans, and these jeans, that leaves $5 more that I need to earn before I cover the cost of this box. All right, next we have another pair of jeans from Massimo. Again, this is used to be sold at Target, if I remember right. They are size six and they are the high rise shorts. All right, next is a pair of shorts from this brand. This is also a brand I see all the time. It has a very low retail value and therefore, do not pick it up for resale. Next, we have a pair of green jeans from the brand Universal Thread. This is currently sold at Target. They are a size 12 slash 31 regular. I buy a lot of my clothing at Target, but because it doesn't retail for that much, and I think there's just so much of it, it doesn't have a very high resale value unless you have certain really desirable pieces. I don't know if green jeans are gonna be that desirable. Next is a pair of, another pair of Levi's. They are the classic boot in a size 32. So fortunately, I do not see any issues with these. Okay, we have a pair of Hollister jeans. They are a size 29 and they are the slim straight style. I don't see any flaws with them. So that's good. I feel like these could be good. They are size eight and they are the straight leg style. So I will definitely look these up and I'm guessing I'll be listing them. There's definitely a huge, oh, look guys, I just made a dime back. <laughs> now the box only cost me $65.90. <laughs> so I'm guessing that I will end up listing these. Um, again, I'll put on the screen whatever I think I can sell them for. 
So next we have a first thing that's not jeans in this box. Well, skirts and shorts, but the first top item. So we have a jean jacket from Gap. This looks like an older Gap tag. It is a size zero. I'm sure I will not be listing these. I was trying to see if the year is here. Oh, yes, I was right. These are from 2004, so they're at least 16 years. This jacket is at least 16 years old. All right, next we have Faded Glory. This is a Walmart brand, or was a Walmart brand. And that is what they look like. Again, this looks like it's not only a Walmart brand, but also an older style. So low resell, out of date. Next we have a pair from Massimo, as I've already said. This is a brand that used to be sold at Target. Next we have another pair of Forever 21 jean shorts. They are a size 30 and they are heavily distressed. And then finally we have a pair of YK jeans. Never heard of this brand but they look pretty dated. They are a size 24 and they are super long. These are like the type people wear with cowboy boots I think. All right, well, that was disappointing. <laughs> so to wrap this up real quick, so in total, I got 63 items. I decided of the 63 items, I would list 17 of them. The rest either were stained, flawed, too out of date, or a brand that retails for too low. In the first three weeks they were listed, three of the items sold. I paid $66 for the box. And on the three items I've sold so far, I made back $61. So nearly everything i have left the 14 items that are still listed almost everything i make on those will be profit although i do find these diy denim boxes really fun to unbox i haven't made a ton of profit in the past and i have a lot of other sourcing options that i want to try out a little bit more so this probably will be the last diy denim box i buy for a very long time thank you all for watching and stay tuned because i'll have a new video out soon